everybody, Ethan here from Word Tech, back with another video for you guys. And today I'm doing uh, one in a many part series, but this is part one of how to sleeve your own power supply cables. This one, I'm just going over all the materials needed. Not everything you see here is needed. Some of them are optional or, or just recommended, for example, but I will go ahead and explain each part individually and tell you guys what you need. And if you're interested in doing this on your own, check out the links in the description because there will be links to all the products that I purchased. So anyway, let's jump straight into it. So first and foremost, obviously, you're going to need cable sleeving. This right here is actually from uh, Mainframe Customs. It's their Telio sleeving. This is the uh, pearl white or polar white, something like that. Uh, really, really high quality sleeving. This is actually some stuff I recommend a lot. You can't see the cable through them at all. And they're really well built. They're robust. They don't feel like they're going to tear. They're easy to cut, easy to work with. I really like this sleeving. So obviously pick the kind you want and the colors you want, but Mainframe Customs does have some pretty amazing stuff. So I'll link them in the description as well. And you guys should definitely go check out their stuff. Now the next material you'll need is heat shrink. And I usually buy excess of stuff, especially when I'm doing power supply sleeving, just to make sure. But honestly, even one four foot section is probably gonna get you through quite a bit, and that's what this is here. But I recommend buying quite a bit of heat shrink. Uh, now you can either do heat shrinkless or using heat shrink, you can uh, make cables. But if you do do heat shrinkless cable sleeving, you still need heat shrink for the process, and then it's removed later. Obviously, I'll explain that in other parts of the video. So you'll need this either way. So make sure you get quite a bit of heat shrink as well. And I always buy some extra materials in case I damage stuff while I'm working on it. So I bought some extra 16 gauge wire here. This is just like a, I think it's a 25 foot section or something like that. Also from Mainframe Customs, I would just grab some of that just in case it's not that expensive. You just want to make sure you have that set aside in case you damage some stuff. I also bought a whole bunch of extra pins of each kind of pin, like for SATA and whatnot. Now, of course, you want to make sure you have a bunch of the ATX pins because those are the ones you're going to be working with the most. Some people don't even sleeve like, you know, their SATA cables and stuff. They're just sleeving their ATX cables. So definitely make sure you have some of these because if you damage a pin, you're going to want to be able to replace it. So important to buy some of those. They're very, very cheap as well. Also from Mainframe Customs. So I'd grab some of those if I were you. Now, another thing I'd actually recommend considering buying if you're doing this, if you're planning to actually take out the old cables on the power supply, instead of making extensions, you're planning to just remove them and put the sleeves on, is it's actually kind of easy to break these connectors. Now that depends on what kind of pin remover, which I'll explain more about that in a bit. But um, I actually broke one of them. So they're not that expensive. I'd probably recommend going to Mainframe Customs and just all the cables you plan to sleeve, just buy an extra ATX connector for those uh, cables just so you have an extra set laying around because I broke one of these and now I'm gonna have to order them so I'm just gonna order a whole set because again those aren't that expensive either the expensive part is the cable sleeving of course now the last thing you'll need when it's in, in relation to actually the cable and what's gonna go on the cable before I get into the tools here is some cable combs now there are a couple different types of cable combs as well as lots of colors of course these ones here are uh, easy to cable combs. Now, uh, basically this style of cable comb is different from most of the ones that you'd probably see, even ones that you get with like custom cable kits and stuff. These ones actually are a full closed loop. So you have to put the cable combs on the cable before you actually assemble the cable into the ATX connector. So make sure you keep that in mind if you're doing this yourself. But uh, I'd recommend going this route just because it looks cleaner and you never have to worry about them falling off. But there are ones that are kind of a U shape that you can insert the cable into. Either way, you know, good to go. But I'd recommend getting these. These ones I ordered from Performance PCs because Mainframe Customs was out of stock at the time, but they also have them. So uh, I'll link both of those in the description as well. So now jumping into the tools. And obviously the first thing you're gonna need is an ATX pin remover. Now I bought a kit. Now if you see these three parts I have here, uh, I bought a kit. It was actually a four part kit. It came with an ATX remover as well as a, a couple other removers for like Molex pins and stuff like that, right? And uh, unfortunately, the ATX remover, not only did it completely suck, but it broke uh, on pin number three. So first off, I couldn't get the thing to go on the side of the pins to actually remove the pins, which you guys will see exactly what I mean by that when I do my tutorial video. Uh, it kept going inside the actual ATX connector, damaging stuff and getting bent. It took me literally like half an hour or so to get a couple of the pins out, which is just ridiculous. I finally broke it and I was like, whatever. So I ordered this one and it is a much better design. It's got a better wedge on it. And so it just goes right in. I was able to disassemble an entire 24 pin set in all of like 10 
10 minutes or so. I mean, it really didn't take long at all. And this one feels like it's gonna hold up. So get a good quality one of these. I'm gonna link both of those in the description because it's nice to have that kit of other tools for removing other pins. But I would make sure you buy the quality ATX pin remover because you're not gonna have fun with the cheaper one. I promise you that it is not good at all. Now, the next thing you're gonna need is a uh, pen and paper, which I know seems really generic, but you wanna make sure that you keep track of what pins go where and what wire gauges go where on the ATX connector because a lot of them, especially ones that have the split connectors where you have, instead of just a 24 to 24 pin for the power supply, you have these little ones, which is really common uh, going to your 24 pin. You have wires that cross over kind of weird. You have ones that line up weird and you have different gauges of wires and stuff. So it's important to have some way to write that all down. And so I recommend, I just uh, draw out the pins here and number them and just make sure I know that this is a set here and you know draw a line or whatever to make sure there's another uh, uh, a differentiation between sets when you're doing multiple cables at the same time and stuff. But just make sure you're marking the gauge, you're marking any of them that have multiple wires and you're marking where they go because you wanna make sure you keep track of that for sure. Also, get yourself a good pair of scissors. Um, they're not 100% necessary, actually. This is something that I don't think you have to have, but it's good to have, because these go along really well with the flesh cutters, which is basically like a really thin pair of wire cutters that are really sharp. Um, now, you can cut like your uh, heat shrink as well as your cable sleeving with either or, but I just like having a pair of scissors, and they're also a little bit easier to cut straight with versus these. These here are more for um, cutting wire and also cutting through like the heat shrink after it's been installed. You wanna have both of them, so so make sure you have a good pair of both. I'll link both of those in the description as well. But uh, I, you know, you can get away with just flush cutters. Just make sure you at least have these scissors recommended. Not absolutely necessary though. Now you're also going to need a lighter. Either if you're doing heat shrinkless uh, uh, cabling, you have to have a lighter or a really good heat gun or torch. But I'd recommend just getting a lighter. They're nice and cheap. I personally like having a candle lighter just because I have a little bit better control over it when it's a uh, lengthened piece versus like a cigarette lighter. So this is my preference but of course you can use a cigarette lighter too they're just butane lighters they're the same thing doesn't really matter right but um, I recommend having one of these and if, you, if you're doing uh, cables where you're gonna leave the heat shrink on the sleeving then you don't have to have a lighter you need like a heat gun or something but it's still you could use a lighter for the same thing so I probably recommend just grabbing one of these because you're gonna be able to do either or style with it now speaking of a heat gun this is the heat gun I purchased here it's not a particularly hot one and in fact it didn't get hot enough to actually melt the sleeving inside the heat shrink so not really one that I'd recommend if you're doing heat shrinkless if you're doing uh, heat shrink uh whatever you want to call it if you're using heat shrink on your sleeving right then a uh, heat gun like this would work just fine but honestly i don't think this is necessary just get a lighter i probably wouldn't recommend buying one of these um this was kind of my first time doing it so i bought every tool that i could think of that i needed obviously i've done a bunch before doing this part of the video but i wasn't really sure what i need so i kind of bought everything you don't really need a, a heat gun so not necessary i would say just stick with a lighter but if you really want to have one laying around just in case or for other mods then, you know, there's one that you can use. Now, you might be wondering what this giant looking funny thing here is. Now, if you've done any soldering before, you already know what this is. Uh, this is a helping hands set. Now, these are really nice for holding cables as well as other stuff that you're gonna be doing close up work with. They're specifically built for soldering, but you can use them for all kinds of other stuff, of course. And I do recommend having these because most power supplies are going to require some form of soldering. Uh, just a lot of them have split cables and stuff. And in order to make things look nice, you need to be able to solder the cables together. Together. having one of these is going to be a huge help in situations like that so I'd recommend getting this uh, honestly if you're not willing to solder it's probably not a great idea to go after sleeving your own cables but instead making extensions because then you don't need to solder and you don't need to use helping hands and stuff like that if you're doing extensions but if you're gonna be sleeving your own cables that are already installed on your power supply then you're gonna want a help uh, set of helping hands and then like I said a soldering iron now I actually bought a full kit here which obviously isn't required to get a huge kit you can get one that's cheaper than this but this one comes with a high quality uh soldering iron with variable temperature control a stand it comes with different uh tips for the soldering iron solder a solder sucker all that kind of stuff so i mean i'd probably recommend having a kit just because if you're doing this you're probably doing other mods that you could use the kit for so it's something that i just recommend keeping around but you know you can go with a little bit cheaper if you need to now another thing i recommend having it's not required but it's a really good idea to have especially if you're not making extensions but you are going to be doing soldering because you're sleeving your own power supply cables is a uh, soldering mat now they make these here they're rated to about a thousand degree heat resistance so i mean you can put a flame on them and stuff and you're you're not going to ruin them. Uh, definitely a good idea to have. You don't want to burn your house down, right? Um, so 
something I recommend, it's not required. Uh, I would say go ahead and get one though. They're really pretty cheap. They last a long time. They're nice to work on. They keep things organized. They have some measurements and stuff on them. So definitely something I would recommend picking up, but is not required. Now, another thing I like to have handy is a couple of rulers. I got a couple of clear plastic ones here. Clear is just kind of convenient in certain situations. Uh, you don't have to have clear ones, of course. And like I said, this solder mat actually does have millimeters on it. So I can use that for measurement instead if I'd like to, but having a solid ruler really does help in a lot of situations. This is a two pack here, but you can get away with just a standard ruler. Um, nice to have one that has both millimeters and you know inches and not is, is you know metric in English and not just English. Uh, just metric you can get away with, but I wouldn't recommend one that's just English. Next thing you're gonna want is a ratchet crimper. Make sure you get the right kind. It needs to be the kind that is capable of uh, crimping like ATX pins and stuff. I actually bought the wrong one over here, which I'm gonna keep because I do lots of work with other kinds of cables, but I accidentally bought one that's for a different kind of crimp and it obviously is not gonna work for what I'm trying to do here. And um, you should really have one of these around with you because chances are you're gonna damage one of the pins. Now, if you use a quality pin puller, maybe not, but chances are you might end up breaking one for whatever reason. That's why I recommend having some extra pins with you and a ratchet crimper. So not required. If you're really, really, really careful, you can probably get away without these and they are somewhat expensive. Um, but if you do, if you're doing this, you should probably get one. And if you're doing your own extensions and stuff or your own custom cables, rather than sleeving your current ones, you absolutely will need one of these and a lot of pins because you're installing your own uh, pins on every cable individually, right? And you'll need more cable in that situation as well. But uh, these here are, uh, they have a pressure dial on them and basically you can stick the pin in here and crimp it down. Now this one in particular is uh, rated from, I believe it's 18, let's see, yeah, 18 to 30 gauge. So it can go down really small. Now the cable I'm using along with the uh, pins I'm using are actually 16 gauge. But what I will say is you can fit a 16 gauge uh, little uh, crimp or a little pin inside here to be crimped. So it will work on those. You're just gonna wanna set the uh, pressure to lower. So it it's functional with those. You don't have to have a 16 gauge and 18 gauge will work, but I'd probably recommend having a 16 gauge just in case but I just want to let you guys know that the, the 18s do tend to work and again you want one that has this really sharp kind of V shape in it those are the ones that are designed for crimping ATX cable uh, ATX pins and the like you do not want one of the ones that's more rounded off and stuff I'll link this one in the description too of course but uh, just something I'd recommend keeping with you and I'd almost almost push into the requirements category now I've also got some uh, cable cutter uh, like cutter slash uh, crimpers slash strippers here um, and honestly I'm just using them for the uh, stripping cables so you could get a cheaper pair of these you don't have to get a high quality one with all the measurements and all kinds of different tools on it you just need one that can uh, strip 18 and 16 gauge wire and preferably 22 gauge wire too just in case um, if you're having to solder wires together you're going to need this to uh, do the uh, to strip out a little bit in the cable uh, in order to solder the two cables together. So you'll need to use this to uh, in the center of the cable, be able to take some of the uh, the sheath off of the cable there. So definitely have a pair of these. It does not have to be a super high end one or anything like that, though. These ones aren't too expensive. I think they were like uh, 20 bucks or something, but you can get them for like five bucks. So they'll do the job just fine. I just went with those because, again, I do a lot of work with other cables and the like. Now, having some brush on super glue is nice, but no, by no means required. In fact, I'm not even sure I'm gonna use it for sure yet, but it's just good to keep around for various purposes. And I have other uses for it, so I went ahead and picked some up. Plus it's cheap, you know, a couple of bucks, like two bucks for this or something like that. So good idea to have it around, but not a requirement by any means at all. Now, this is a super, super convenient tool here. Also not a requirement, but super recommend having one of these. Uh, if you have a good pair of cable strippers, you don't have to, but this does make your life a lot easier. So this is a self-adjusting wire stripper. So you just stick the wire inside here and you actually have this little squeeze tool that you can use to measure how long you want the wire strip to be. And you stick the wire in there and all you do is you just clip like that and it just does a perfect strip on the end of the wire which allows you to get just a really 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 nice clean cut on the wire now last and kind of least actually uh is a exacto knife you don't have to have one of these even for uh, there are some methods when you're uh, using multiple cables that split that people say you should have one of these you can do that with the flesh cutters though when you're trying to remove some of the uh wire uh, uh sheathing around in the center of the wire, right? So this isn't necessary to have. Now this kit here, I'm actually really disappointed in because it's a good price kit and comes with everything you could possibly need. But unfortunately, the actual 
knives inside, and I'll try and get a close-up shot of this just like I am of everything, um, are held in by an adhesive magnet in the plastic in the top. That adhesive is nowhere near sticky enough, and they literally always fall out. So every time you open this kit, you've got to try and put them back up in there and try not to cut yourself on these super sharp razor knives. Really frustrated about that, actually, almost to the point that I might return it and just buy the plastic kit rather than the wooden kit. Not, uh, not a kit I recommend. It'll be linked in the description anyway, but uh, I'll probably link a better one in there as well because this is just something that's a big pain in the butt. I may have gotten unlucky. Maybe the other kits have no problem and that adhesive just stays and everything's totally fine. But in my situation in particular, I opened them up and the first thing is they'd fallen out. Pain in the butt, hate it, really disappointed in that actually also not required so probably not even a recommendation that you have to get one you could get away with just a single exacto knife it's really simple i bought a kit because again i do lots of other stuff so that's pretty much everything there that you would need for doing this if there's anything that you guys think i missed for some reason let me know but so far i've been obviously sleeving quite a few cables and i haven't had any trouble with just this set of tools here um so just if there's something that you guys maybe recommend, go ahead and throw that in the description. But this is my recommendations for doing uh, cable sleeving. Some of them you have to have, like obviously the lighter, ATX pin remover, etc. cetera. Um, and if you're making extensions, again, you don't need the soldering kit, so just keep that in mind, but I'd still recommend having it uh, just for various reasons. But thank you everybody for watching. Obviously don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down there to let me know what you think of this video. And let me know, uh, got, let me know what you guys think of this series because I'll be doing a full tutorial on how to do every step of the way to sleeving your own cables as well as um, you know some recommendations if you're doing extensions or you're doing custom length cables which in that case you're going to want some string too by the way if you're doing custom length cables so you can kind of measure out what you want in your system and chop it there most people don't do custom length cables they either sleeve theirs or get extensions or build extensions but custom length cables probably in my opinion I, I really do think they look the best and are easiest to organize so um, just let me know what you guys think of this series and let me know if you want to see more for sure and and uh, don't forget to check out the links in the description down there. There's our Patreon page as well as links to our website and links to every product in this video. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next one.